we want to the responsible for climate science and we want that if climate action delays, global warming will drive us to a point where our natural system, including human society, can no longer adapt to the impacts of climate change. This means that we will experience increased catastrophic events and increased loss and damages to communities. Already now, there are communities seeing the reverse all impacts of climate change. To address this, we need increased finance to communities that are on the front already experience these impacts to build resilience and adapt to these impacts. At the same time, we need to continue our advocacy in demanding for rapid, deep, and sustained mitigation efforts to historical pollutants, particularly the global ones. The IPCC has recently released its assessment assessment. Let's hear from one of the contributors. Yes, from the reports, climate change is already causing you know substantial damages to our natural ecosystems, the people and their livelihoods. And the extent and level of vulnerability of us will be severe, especially in countries that have development constraints. Yeah, and globally, these hotspots are in Africa, Asia, South and Central America, and the Arctic region. So uh, these countries will be exposed to uh, food insecurity, water crisis, and health crisis. Because of this, um, there will be high level of vulnerabilities and, and, and also women, uh, pregnant mothers and children, uh, the young people will be exposed uh, to you know, climate uh, disasters. And again, uh, there's a reason for concern because uh, climate change will be distributed, the impact will be distributed you know, to almost all the countries so no country will be excluded you know from this impact based on the IPCC uh, projection so we need to uh, invest massively although there is an uh, increased level of uh, um, you know adaptation that we need to increase um, our efforts towards um, building a climate smart systems that will you know respond to future climate risks. Frontline communities cannot wait Humanity cannot wait. We need climate action now, and we need adaptation and resilience now, and we need to reach net zero as early as possible. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. We know that the UN will be responsible for climate science and we want that if climate action delays, global warming. Good morning, everyone, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's such a great opportunity. Uh, to be here um, from the video, and uh, that is a um, that is Joshua Hussein, is the <laughs> founder of um, Green Africa Projects, and uh, you know he's also working um, with the World Bank. So we did a collab on the video about um, the impact of climate change, how we are going to communicate, uh, you know, climate science to you know diverse you know people. Uh, to ensure that uh, we build a resilient system. Yes, before, my name is uh, Dr. Achibo Wakwa, um, Department of Geography, uh, University of Rio, Nigeria. And it's so great to be here. So I'll be presenting uh, the topic of the uh, effect of commercial building orientation on indoor climate in tropical environments, because um, having that context, bringing you an insight on how urban climate studies really looks like. Um, um, also an expert uh, reviewer for the IPCC and, uh, and also a climate policy expert um, for the UNFCC. So um, the latest report um, by the IPCC, as you already know, IPCC is um, it's an international body that uh, reports on climate science. Um, the synthesis report was part of the review. So. Uh, really talked about building a climate smart, you know, resilient systems across every sector, building sector, transportation, agriculture, energy sector, you know, and every other sector of the society. So, uh, so let's get started. Um, this is um, just a slide on how, you have, how, how to integrate adapt some adaptive uh, measures to climate change to reduce, you know, uh, CO2 emissions and improving livelihoods, clean energy, water, and air quality. Okay. So uh, over there, that's a picture, a kind of a picture that shows how our buildings should look like, uh, in that uh, green roof on buildings. 
to you know moderate the microclimates of the building. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, a little bit of the context, um, the background, uh, the main purpose of all buildings is to adapt to the current and provide also the current climate and provide a you know, comfortable and conducive environment um, for you know occupants like as we are now. We are thermally distressed or thermally stressed. You, you try to walk out of this building because of the activity that they're engaging. So, however, in this era of climate change and global warming, uh, maintaining comfort for building um, occupants is very difficult, but it's also essential. So, especially in tropics, tropical environments uh, that is being characterized by you know extreme. In weather conditions, so it wreaks havoc on building structure. Sometimes you see flooding, you know, um, having impacts on the building. So, some of the uh, weather variables or climatic variables um, that um, determines, um, uh, let me say, that determines the comfort zone or yeah, your comfort limits are basically temperature, relative humidity. Rainfall, solar radiation, um, the prevailing wind speed, and uh, those are some of the key uh, climatic uh, variables. So, buildings in tropical climates should all be orientated to the south. Uh, this is just, um, let me say, a summary of what we should be expecting, how we, um, you know, uh, organize our building structures and the orientation. So, um, at in the tropical environment, those orientation, uh, the facets should always be facing the north or facing the south. Uh, okay, so this is uh, some of the impacts, especially in developing countries. Extreme flooding could, you know, submerge a building. Sometimes you realize that even in the, in the wet season, um, you find out that uh, occupants will have to migrate to a different location that is safe. So it becomes a very big problem. You know, some that still insist on staying, of course, you can see the impacts almost uh, submerging the entire building. And it's not just common in tropical environments or developing countries. It's also uh, uh, prevalent in developed countries. So it's something that affects each and every one of us, uh, no matter where we are. So that is why it's really important for us to learn on how to uh, you know, adapt. So uh, next slide. So uh, this is um, uh, what the IPCC um, did. Um, the next assessment report should be around 20, uh, 2030. This is the sixth and uh, the last assessment report until, until 2030. And uh, we are trying to you know, see how we can you know, achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goal by 2030 and also to have CO2 emissions uh, by 2030. So the, uh, there is some level of scenarios, uh, the 1.5 that we all talked about. It is the safe heaven for us. So if <laughs> we don't take action and we don't reduce our carbon footprints, uh, we likely get to 2.2 uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, that's, those are some of the impacts you'll be experiencing in the nearest future. Or if you want a scenario of 3 degrees or 4 degrees, it becomes more extreme. <coughs> like I said, even in the video, these impacts and the risks will be distributed to every region of the world. Uh, so no matter where you are, if you don't build your resilience, you'll be you know, impacted. But mostly in Africa and Asia, I think uh, India is currently the world's most populous uh, country. Of the, uh, so uh, India would, you know, and some um, South Asian uh, countries would experience greater impact. Africa also, of course, will experience a greater impact of climate change. So uh, uh, when we talked about comfort studies, um, um, like I said, it depends on the activities that you're engaging in. So if you are doing a hard work, probably start stretching in, in your location or probably in the room that you are doing the activity. So each of these uh, uh, temperature varies depending on the human body and uh, the metabolic heat production and also the next uh, radiation exchange. So it becomes very important for you to you know, assess the uh, climatic condition, the microclimate of the buildings. Probably it's a commercial building, 
And that is why this um, topic is really important because every building is kind of the same. So even if it's, it's a school, it's still a building. Even if it's an office space, it's still a building. So um, it could be re replicated anyway. So there's what we talk uh, called the uh, predicted mean votes. It's just like a kind of model uh, that is used to you know assess those um, scale um, the different kind of temperature depending on your physical or uh, physiological conditions so we have um uh, uh, cold slightly cold uh, and uh, neutral slightly warm and warm hot so uh, this is one of the works that rodriguez and latin did in 2011 so very important um um um, um, work that he did in terms of um, really assessing, you know, those uh, physiological conditions based on the the human body uh, temperature. So, um, aside from that, it is also the predicted uh, percentage of dissatisfied. So this talks about the <laughs> the number of comfort hours um, and the number of also discomfort hours. Probably you are trying to calculate. In a year or probably in a week, uh, how many comfort hours do you have? Uh, how many discomfort hours do you have based on the current realities of climate change? So there's also the standard effective temperature, which basically is to you know evaluate you know um, um, climate conditions that are really extreme. For, for <laughs> it's really important for you know countries in the tropics because they experience you know extreme. Um, humidity, uh, high humidity and, um, and high temperature. So temperature ranging from uh, 30 degrees uh, Celsius and above and relative humidity ranging from 70% um, uh, and above makes it really relevant to measure, you know, um, the, the uh, comfort limits. So, and uh, yeah, so um, also, uh, Mike Inter also tried to do some assessment, especially on the, the various um, sensation and physiological state of sedentary person. Probably as we are sitting right now, it's very different from uh, when you're engaging in, in an activity. So the comfort um, limit, of course, becomes very high, especially when you're sitting in one place, uh, you're not exercising and all of that. So it becomes really you know, difficult. Then um, this is also uh, some of the uh, methods, of course, aside from calculating comfort limits in tropical environments, there are also uh, methods used in calculating uh, comfort limits in developed countries uh, based on yeah, you know, weather conditions. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, <coughs> This is um, the study area. This is Uyo, Uyo Urban, southern Nigeria. Uh, you can see in the map, we had um, uh, four points for location. And, uh, and this is uh, the building structure. So each of those building structure had similar design. And um, we tried to uh, use some microclimatic side measurements. Um, yeah, there's what we call the slim uh, cyclometer. It was really mounted on those buildings to collect uh, ambient air temperature, relative humidity, and uh, wind speed. So those were uh, three, the three um, climate parameters that we really measured. And looking at the um, transitional periods, uh, try to measure it across uh, the two seasons. We have two seasons in Nigeria. Um, the wait. The rainy season and the dry season. So, so we took the measurement for 14 days in the dry season and 16 days in the rainy season, and uh, the height of the measurement was one one per one meters. So we use the uh, Zocale method to to estimate the comfort uh, zone, comfort limit, and um, based on what we had, um, uh, the the low the lower comfort zone was about limit was about. 23.9 degrees Celsius, and the upper limit was about 29.30. So between uh, 23 and 29, that is the comfort zone. So if you move away from, uh, you know, that uh, figure, uh, you, you are already thermally stressed. 
So, uh, so we had some results, very interesting results. Um, realized that this, because our measurement was on different um, synoptic hours um, from 9 to 12 to 3 p.m. and also 6 p.m. So, so we had to, you know, measure those um, variables and um, also the location, sorry, and also the, the uh, yeah, the orientation. Our orientation was south to north, west to east, north to south, and um, east to west. And uh, so at uh, 13, at 3, that is uh, 15 uh, hours, we had a um, high number of discomfort hours, 23. 30, you know, 25 and 30, each of those orientation. So you can see from there, then um, our, our comfort hours, you know, we had lesser comfort hours because it was during the peak of, you know, high um, extreme temperature. So also um, we tried to look out for the comfort limits at, um, you know, 1600 degrees. So those are just the value. And um, we realized that uh, when you are looking for those comfort limits, you know, signal variations was really a factor, especially during the rainy period, you tend to have um, a high number of uh, comfort hours. And then during the you know, um, dry season, you tend to have um, a high number of um, discomfort hours. So as you can see um, from these charts, uh, each of those um, um, hours we calculated, and that is the upper limit, um, the lower limit of the, you know, uh, comfort zone. And um, at each of the hours, it was calculated, so we can see how um, the trend is shown. Then um, these are some of the uh, findings. Uh, the ease and ways should be shaded, especially since. If the orientation is north or south, so we need to shade for passive pooling. So passive pooling was one of the interesting features that we need to adapt into our building. Uh, of course, uh, aside from using ACs and, and other technologies, we should try to use some bioclimatic uh, aspects, bioclimatic factors to really design our buildings. And again, um, climate proofing, you know, there are some areas that are prone to flooding, so we need to you know, um, look at those areas, probably um, retrofix those areas to ensure that uh, the building doesn't collapse when there's extreme flooding. So, and um, we need to also allow urban planners and designers, of course, to, you know, um, design their buildings, taking into the account the current um, climatic um, crisis. I think uh, we have really exhausted my time, but for now, that was what we had. and. Uh, and uh, the most interesting thing is that um, you can replicate this study um, in any year, especially in tropical environments. And you can also use other methods to estimate for, you know, uh, temperate and polar regions. Thank you very much. We've lost a bit of time beginning with the video stuff, but there's one, there's a question on slide I was going to ask. So just, just maybe a quick question. Does the comfort zone change over time? So as, as people adapt to high temperatures, Yes, the so comfort zone. The comfort changes, and uh, uh, as you adapt, depending on the region you are, um, the comfort zone is just like a standard to measure, you know, the the weather or the climatic condition in that building. So, if the adventure is high temperature, because the limits will have to and the exist the value will, will exist. But we are still using the comfort limit to also measure if someone is out of you know the the threshold or is within the comfort zone.